Hi, I'm Peter Lara, and I'm here having a conversation with Charlie Stevens about this original 22-year-old Giotto, its evolution, and our journey through coffee. Charlie, I don't even know how to introduce you. First, that you're my dad's friend. Yeah. And I like to call you my friend too. Absolutely. It's been a journey. You've started Espresso Company Australia 22 years ago, bringing in the Giotto and the mm. Veneziano mm -hmm. at the time. Mm. You come from a big background of coffee. Your cousin owns mm. one of the biggest coffee companies in Australia. Mm. Mm. Insanely huge. Coffee's been in your background the whole time. And from when I was a kid too. From when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah. And it's definitely been a journey. It's been good to be part of an industry that has come from sort of what's coffee yep. to now one of the most sophisticated espresso markets in the world. And look, it was luck and timing bringing something like this in. Why do Australians love coffee so much? I think it's a social connection that we all have and need rather than a, a daily tradition at a particular yep. time of the day. We all love to sort of have a coffee because we can't have a wine at 11 o'clock in the morning. Well, so we'll have a coffee and we'll talk about some stuff, talk about good stuff, bad stuff, but it's all around coffee and we're very lucky to have that. Well, I think around coffee, there's always that moment in time where you have a coffee, the world stops, whether it's down at your local cafe or at home by yourself mm. or with friends. I think the coffee moment is really important. And it's mm. about the social connection and the fabric. Looking at this particular machine, it's an original Giotto, 22 years old, mm. the first machine or from the first batch of machines you imported yep. Yep. into the country. Yep. You still have it, it's quite special. They still come in for servicing on a, on a sort of a weekly basis, this age's era of machinery. And they still produce fabulous espresso, yep. you know, and, and it doesn't change, even the evolution of machinery still produces what it did 20, 20 years ago. What I like is, current Giotto, mm. now called a Conometro in the V mm. or an R, mm. with a Giotto body, it really is an evolution of that machine and in some ways you can see the resemblance, much like you see an old Porsche 911 mm. and that style has remained mm. the same and iconic and timeless. Mm. Mm. Rocket have been the same, they've kept that traditional timeless design, it really has integrity. I like things that kind of are original, mm. are focused on design, beautiful products, mm. timeless. The design was um, well timed because yeah. it was special, it is special, and it's remained that. Um, the sophistication with a few features here and there and a few internal sort of changes. Um, but it's kept the aesthetic value that looks great at home, in the kitchen, on the bench, that the family comes around or your friends come over. And it's a little mini scaled down commercial machine in all aspects. It really um, is. So what it can produce is exactly what you go and pay for and, you know, uh, daily. Now going back down memory lane, mm. I think I first met you when you're opening a company 2001. What I remember meeting you was down at Toby's estate in Woolloomooloo. Yeah, so Toby, where, where your dad had the E61. Yeah. yeah, so Toby had moved away from roasting effectively in his mum's backyard in yep. that lane. Yep. Opened this cafe in Woolloomooloo. At the time, it was the place to be. It was the mecca of coffee. Everyone was there. One of the first true espresso bars too. With, with a roastery, with a yeah. roaster in it. Yeah. My dad had lent them the Emma E61, the original for the first six months. Mm. And I just remember going there, you'd turn up, you were the cool guy in coffee, supplying the gear. Oh, thank you. You, you then replaced- a bit generous, but yeah. You then replaced his machine with your Veneziano, which at the time was the machine. And it was a, it was a little bit of a further take on the, the E61. Yeah, come from the same Emma. group heads. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit more modernized version of it. Um, much like this was 22 years ago and the, the current uh, Giotto is very, very similar. Yeah. Mm. Aesthetically a bit different, but quite identical internally. And at the time, Toby's was still roasting. Paul Bassett wasn't the World Barista Champ yet, mm. was there with the machines. Dean Morgan was climbing a ladder and marking every every minute with a pencil and a pad. Yeah, and he later on opened Morgan's Green. He's done well. Toby's obviously well known, yeah, done well. Yeah. Paul's done well. 
and it's then seeing these machines at the time the, the machines at the Brewster comp. So I remember Cafe Beers which um, mm, Sean mm, Edwards mm, is running mm, and mm. it'll be the two Venezianos mm. and my dad would have the coffee parts banner yeah, across yeah. the top. We were both sponsoring even the, the comps. Yeah, even the um, state titles and the Australian titles oh. with the Veneziano. I do remember yeah. once at Andrew Gross's warehouse Correct. and then yeah, at yeah. the ride, I think at the Cafe Beers. That's right, yeah. ride catering. I actually remember I was doing my HSC at the time and I finished my exam, I had my P's, I was 17 years old and rushing over to then help at the trade show at the time Coffee Parts was my father's mm. and just seeing you guys there, there was photos of you with the Giotto and my dad, my mom holding the... It's a little bit the... like the Wild West wasn't it? Yeah. When the whole thing was just starting and growing and why did it grow to what it is now? What, what was the drivers that sort of allowed Australia to become this espresso-centric culture that we have today. I think there was education on the mm. market. There were coffee roasters that were really pushing what quality coffee mm. looked like, what milk looked like, what latte mm. art, entering the competition, staging events that were industry events, people were turning up. Mm. I mean, we got photos back at Toby's estate where like the whole industry was there. Yeah, it was... it's very collaborative and very inclusive back yeah. then, which was great to be part of as it was developing. I felt like even looking back you had at the trade shows all the coffee companies got along. This was the era of Toby's and All Press and Campos yeah. but not as you know them today as the founders working behind the coffee machines. It, and you get that I think with any mature industry yep. it does become very competitive as a result and yep. therefore there's a little bit more fragmentation of uh, you know people and territory and it's, it reshuffles it looks different it yeah. evolves yeah. but it, looking back at the memory lane it, I mean I was going through the photos today before of, you came yeah. and I was like and it kind of was just like and then I texted them to you it was this we'll pop the photos up through this video but it, it was, was just a boy yeah <laughs> it's actually weird to say we've known each other for 22 years and I kind of look mm. I'm 37 now so I've known you for most of my life <laughs> More than half your life. Is the maths right on that? Probably. Probably. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's been really cool to be part of this um, journey and to see some really good people yep. that have created themselves some really wonderful brands. Yeah. You know, there are some cracking brands out there. Yep. Um, that, you know, you and I were around when the infancy of them were just starting off, just like I did with this. I pushed. The business out of the front room yeah. at home yeah. and I was doing administration invoicing at night and deliveries during the day and I had a third party warehouse that I'd go and collect and deliver and go back. I'd go back to that three times a day See, just I, to get more stuff I, I, to deliver. I only knew you from being out at coffee. I didn't yeah. actually know that. Going to your warehouse now is a very different story. It's, it's a warehouse. Well, I think we've done a good job. Genuinely like people yeah. and I think that's helped being in the wholesale side of the industry. Yeah. You know, these are relationships that are very dear to us and we protect them uh, and we empower them and we support what we sell. The cool thing is looking at the evolution of the Giotto, mm. so it, it's evolved. This was the original one. You had the internal valves, you had the one gauge. It was still a heat exchange machine only in a vibrating pump. Mm. As it evolved, they had the Giotto Evolution, which had mm. the rotary pump. Mm. They went to two gauges, the valves became external. So they progressively improved the grill here, changed from this wire grill to something a bit yeah. prettier. Mm. And then as it kept evolving, you had multiple versions, the gauges changed. Mm. The evolution of it um, has been great. Yep. You know, the inclusion of a chronometro yeah. timer. Yep. So that on the you current know, it's that version, 30 mils in 30 seconds, seconds. which is not technically correct but it's a ballpark it yeah, stops the 15 the second and the 50 second extractions yeah um, so now it's called the chronometro and you've got mm -hmm. a v and r but the giotto shape has remained has remained because as you said it, you know like a porsche yeah the, the iconic sort of design has remained yeah which is great because it it does it looks fantastic it's at home it looks fantastic in an office um, it makes wonderful espresso just like and a, your best favorite cafe yep. or espresso bar can reproduce and by default you know it's good for the family but there's a whole lot of friends that sort of appear on the doorstep Ooh. on a Saturday morning and wondering move. if the machine's mm -hmm. on actually yeah sometimes yeah. too many but um and moving on 
from the domestic range, they've really built out the commercial range. Like Rocket now is a solid, well-known, well-respected company. It's, it's beautifully yeah. branded. Yeah. Like they've done a really good job. Thank you. Yeah, they, they should be proud of themselves. Yeah. It's a beautiful Italian brand. Yeah. And they have a, uh, have a wonderful range with, you know, uh, a machine for basically most categories. Every need. Yeah. But predominantly espresso yeah. machines and grinders. Sort of going back down memory lane again, this Giotto, a lot of it's actually based on the Fama E61. Now we've mentioned that when we first met, my dad had led yeah. the three group E61 to Toby's. Correct. But we actually have a one group E61. So let's have a look at the Fama. Hmm, absolutely. So this is your original Fama E61. In many respects, the Giotto has been inspired by this, like running the same group head. Now, heat, heat exchange internally. Heat exchange internally. Yep. This one had an external rotary pump. Obviously, mm. the Giotto is running a vibrating pump internally. Mm -hmm. This machine had to be plumbed in. Mm. But, and this is a one group version of the three group that we mm. mentioned. Mm. So the, I actually dad, have yeah. the one, two, and three. Like I actually yeah. rebuilt the two group as a tribute to my dad yeah. and signed wow. his name wow. in it. I built this one for me. It's fully rebuilt inside. And the three group we left as is. But this is this is quite iconic. Yep and probably the most iconic or recognizable start to this um, one group series at, yeah. at home. Yeah. And the Giotto that we had, that I first sold 22 years ago, yeah. um, I actually bought back from this woman who came in and I just happened to be there and she said, do you buy back machines? And I went, this one? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so it came back to us. Yeah. Um, but the Giotto was an evolution on this. Yeah. And then, 22 years later from the original Giotto. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll bring that up in a minute too. We're actually talking about things coming back. We sold the machine to a beautiful couple. Mm. And a couple of years ago, there was the fires that happened mm. in Sydney on the South Coast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fires took out the house that this mm. Giotto was in. And the whole house burned down, the car burned down, the aluminium wheels of the car had melted. And this Giotto fell from mm. the second story down been completely ablaze and it still looked pretty mm. good. Obviously it was burnt, mm. right? the, all the electrical burnt. cables mm. are gone. The metal shell, we actually have it here because the owners were like, we know you like your collectible stuff. Yeah, we thought yeah. this would be full circle. We bought this from you wow. two months ago. Wow. And here it is. So we've actually got it. Might do a video on it. We've actually got the video. The, sad, the sad, uh, sad story that it came back to you in that yeah. particular way, but um, a, a good fashioned, good old fashioned, well built machine. Said, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry for those people. And it's... Yeah, no, they, they were very spirited. They were very happy. Mm. Um, they were insured and they kind of wanted to yeah, yeah. rebuild anyway. <laughs> so, um, one way to get an upgrade. Yeah, so, I mean, mm. I think they were just more positively spirited than, yeah, than the yeah. reality of it. Yeah. So, this is the original E61. Mm -hmm. The Giotto obviously was 22 year old came mm -hmm. and now let's have a look at what the Giotto of today yeah, looks like absolutely. to see kind of the similarities in the evolution and the style and the design of it is still very retro yeah and and it it's continued to hold that um, interest to have that at home or in your office well, uh, the on, irony on the bench is this fam E61 now he sold as a fam legend so you can still buy this machine mm. in this shape. In a, in a modern version. So there's a few coffee machines. You yeah. can look at the Lama Zucca GS and you can now buy the GS3. Correct. This Fama mm. you can now buy as a legend. Mm. And the Giotto you can still buy. Mm. There is machines that have stood the test of time mm. and have become iconic. And yeah. I don't know, there's something about iconic things. I like it when it comes to well, cars and watches. I like icons. Everything great has a, has a, a circle. Cool. And you know, these things have come back into Vogue or fashion, yeah. and, and it's really cool to have one now. Yeah. But I remember my cousin saying, I just I took so many of them to the tip yeah. because they were like, you know, not relevant anymore, and there's new, bigger, shiny yeah. stuff. But all of a sudden, that whole thing's circle. come around full circle, and now this is the thing to have again. Yeah. Yeah. So let's pop up the new Giotto. Absolutely. We have the current, the latest Giotto. model. Giotto. So it's, it's evolved, the valves are external. We've got just behind the drip tray here, we've got the PID hidden. Mm -hmm. So they've hidden the tech to make the design timeless. The two gauges, 
like the shape is the same, but obviously modernized mm -hmm. slightly. It's a little softer on the on the edges, edges. Uh, just to give it a softer look. But the overall appearance is still the same. Same. The yeah. cup rail's gone to metal instead of plastic, yeah. and feet are a little higher, mm -hmm. but it you know proportionately and aesthetically still fits into that home environment that you know. The designs remain the same and the, the head still the same E61 from the Fama E61. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's a common head in the market. There's um, a lot of machines running that group head, but it just works well. Yeah, because it, it's um, it's nearly five kilos of, of brass yep. and it's the brass that conducts the ultimate sort of temperature yep. to create espresso and more importantly retains the heat yep. so that you can um, have the, the temperature that you need to yep. create, you know, technically correct espresso. Yeah, it's, yeah. I don't know. There's something about this machine that's just always going to be iconic. Well, this will be, maybe we can come back in another 22 Two years. years. Then Damn. have another conversation. How old will I be? 27. You, will you be 59 my 59 years old. <laughs> oh my God. Damn. And I'll be 70. <laughs> we could do it. But it'll still produce. Yes. And, and this is the good thing about it. You, you can't, you can change a few to buy things. Back. I, I, can't. I actually yeah. sold this one to a friend. So. <laughs> That's all right. I might We're, have to go. In 22 years, it has to come back. We've got some more. <laughs> and and this will end up in some museum as well. Yeah. Anyway. But um, it'll remain the same. Yeah. Uh, for the next 20 years. It's been nice to actually look at the Giotto, look at the evolution. Mm. Kind of think about all the trade shows we've been to the Christmas dinners, mm. both with our two companies and our teams and just ourselves. You know, like and that's what you get for, you know, knowing somebody for as long as we have. Yeah. You know, it's it's a rapport and a relationship and we're in the same part of the industry together, we're in wholesale. Yeah. So those relationships are really important and incredibly enjoyable. Yeah, no, mm. just, I don't, I don't even, little cheeky drinks in Italy. It's been, it's been, yeah, I we, mean, I remember visiting Rocket with you and seeing how the factory works. It's, it's been a really nice journey. Coffee's, uh, coffee's been really good to the both of us. Yeah. You know, what it is, the industry that it, it, it has become, the places we've been. Yeah. You know, and I think fundamentally we both like coffee, the journey and what it represents, like the moments in time, the mm. time with yourself, with your mm. family, mm. you know, with the barista just, at a cafe. Yeah. Just forever intrigued as to Australia and what it is and why it's become so internationally recognised as a coffee centric, uh, espresso centric, I should say, yeah. market. It really, you know, it's, it's within our social fabric and, you know, it's a, as you said earlier on, it's a, a point of social connection. So the photos that popped up, the reason I'm not in any of the photos, because I was the one taking them at the time, <laughs> but it's like... A good eye for a cameraman at 16. Yeah, no, it was the first digital camera my dad had bought. It was a one megapixel Kodak camera. Oh, wow. Um, but it's been nice watching the industry. You're talking about Australian coffee, but it's been nice to see the evolution because when my dad started in coffee, mm. when you started mm. in coffee, and I guess when I was introduced, mm. coffee was was not what it is today. And it's now, there's a cafe in every corner, machine well, we, in every corner. Yeah, when it's, dad and I started, we didn't know what it was gonna become. Yeah. You know, to what it is to now, it's been a great surprise. Well, my dad started because in Portugal, where we're from, espresso was a natural thing, a natural mm. way to meet up with people mm. and he kind of missed that. He had the Fermi 61, mm. he needed parts mm. for it. You know, he started bringing in parts to mm. fix it. Obviously that turned into a business mm. um, through that journey we've all met. But it's kind of, it was never for, for a particular outcome. It's just because he actually just loved mm. the cafe, the hospitality mm. lifestyle. Mm. Mm. Much like myself, um, I found myself in coffee because I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. And it's been fantastic. It really has. Nice to see the people that, you know, you and I have grown up with and how they've created themselves businesses and brands, become brands themselves. Yeah. And you know, we've all we've all done well. It's funny to see like even going through the photos before today, all the people I saw in the photo, I was pointing them out, they've all become really big well-known brands and companies yeah and like somehow internationally some, recognized some have dropped off the bandwagon but like um but it's been amazing to see mm. and it's kind of like i'm curious to see where the next generation where things will be in 22 years 
We'll have to I, revisit. I, I wonder if they, they'll still be well, YouTube. Let, well, let's do this again and then we can look no. back and see how it's you know, rolled on, progressed and what it's become. And on that note, if you've got any questions for Charlie or myself on the Giotto, the evolution of the Giotto, even just memories of the coffee journey from the last 22 years in Australia, hit us up in the comments below. It would be cool to go down memory lane. And if this video has brought you value, if it's brought you some joy, hit that thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe.